I want to welcome everybody, um, and in particular, I want to welcome our two guests, um, Jeff Goral and Harry Siegel. Um, Jeff, besides um, having an extensive um, day job in real estate, has his hobby, I guess, running two tracks in upstate New York. And Harry's day job is at the Daily News, and um, I hope we have a spirited conversation um, around the issue of casino gambling. And I, I, as a moderator, or I'm going to try to say as little as I can, but I do want to use my privilege as a moderator to draw a clunky metaphor. And the metaphor that I'm going to draw is, as everybody knows, tonight's Halloween, and I am appropriately dressed with my orange sweater. And the theme of Halloween is trick or treat. And I think in some ways the metaphor to casino gambling is, is the hope for casino gambling really a trick, which is going to trick um, the New York taxpayer and the New York citizen um, with poor jobs, um, potentially gaming, gambling addiction, or is it really a treat, particularly for the upstate economy, which is suffering, and that it will re lead um, in at least four areas to a renaissance of economic development. And in some ways, um, the social cost versus the economic gain, at least to me, is the critical issue as people try to evaluate whether we should change New York State's constitution to formally allow full-blown casinos. Um, some people will argue that we crossed that line many, many years ago when we allowed racinos to open up and that this is really just the culmination of a trend that started 20 years ago. Um, you know, the proposal allows full-blown casinos. The law says if the amendment is passed, the law states there were, that New York can open seven full-blown casinos, but it also states that the first four of them will have to be in upstate New York. Um, and it's a little bit vague after a certain number of years what the criteria will be <coughs> for the location of the remaining three cas full-blown casinos. Um, in, in the spirit of Halloween, I think I, would, I will probably ask Jeff to talk about what he sees as the treat of casinos for New York and why casinos are a good idea and why voters should vote yes come next Tuesday. And then I will turn it over to Harry to talk about why, why he might see this as the trick on Halloween night. So Jeff, the, as they say, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, I kind of think you sort of uh, made part of my argument. Um, I've become an expert in the casino business uh, unintentionally. I'm, I'm really a horse racing guy. Uh, when I saw that horse racing, especially harness racing, it was going to disappear in New York State, I got involved in the lobbying effort to allow the racetracks to convert over to racinos in order to a solve save the horse racing industry and at the same time generate uh, significant money for uh, the state for education and create a lot of jobs and my friend over here the moderator was actually involved in that process um, when he was at the Senate as the budget director I guess right yeah. so uh, one of my jobs was to uh, try to convince uh, both Shelley and Joe Bruno that this thing was actually going to generate a billion dollars for education. It's taken a while because of the fiasco at Aqueduct, but basically I would think we're probably right on target to, to, to generate a billion dollars for education. Uh, so whatever we predicted would, was going to happen has happened. Uh, at the same time, um, uh, when I opened Tayoga and, and stupidly opened Vernon, reopened, both of these were 
were bankrupt racetracks. Tioga had been closed for 30 years. Uh, I never heard of it, frankly. Uh, was a quarter horse track and was open for two years back in the 70s or early 80s, and that was it. Um, and Vernon was a harness track that had gone into bankruptcy. And the appeal of Tioga, frankly, besides racing, was that my mother was from Binghamton, and, I th and she had passed away, but I thought she would really get a kick out of it if she knew I was doing something up in the Binghamton area because I hated to go to Binghamton <laughs> when I was a kid because I used to get car sick on Route 17, you know how that was, before it was a straight road. So I, I, I hooked up with a, a casino company, Nevada Gold, and uh, off we went. And unfortunately, uh, the people in Albany to the, you know, weren't, to, to, I can't blame Abe for this. I don't believe he had anything to do with it. But some genius, uh, the original legislation that allowed these racinos, which was passed after 9-11, but was going to be passed anyway. Uh, I think without 9-11, they were, they were going to pass a bill that would have basically allowed maybe two or three racinos as an experiment, but then after 9-11. But, but they stupidly uh, had a tax rate of 87.5%. So nobody opened with that tax rate. Uh, then they changed the tax rate, uh, I think, to 71%. And a couple of people opened. And uh, Monticello was one they were going to close after they opened. They were going out of business. Saratoga and, and Finger Lakes were probably a break even. And then um, a judge ruled that the law that allowed us, allowed these things was unconstitutional on the grounds that you couldn't give money from the lottery to anyone but education, uh, the, the lottery to run it, and the vendor. And, and a portion of the money was going to the horsemen to keep them afloat. So uh, I got involved, I hired a superstar constitutional lawyer, we rewrote the legislation and, and we uh, rewrote it with a lower tax rate. And I, I went up to the budget people and I convinced them that if they were to change the law, that A, would be constitutional, B, that all of us would open, and C, the state would make more money uh, than they were gonna make with the higher tax rate. So I was able to, it was actually called the Goral Bill and the governor Pataki all along said he was going to veto it, and everybody said, well, you know, he's going to veto it, and I said, no, he's not, because it's going to create, generate a billion dollars. So at the end of the day, he didn't veto it, and we, we got up and running, and lo and behold, I was losing a fortune, because while I had lowered the tax rate, I hadn't lowered it enough, and the, the casino company that I was partners with had no clue what they were doing and made terrible projections, and um, we were losing about a million dollars a month. And uh, at, at that point, uh, the casino company bailed out, uh, another investor bailed out, and I was left, fortunately, with a deep-pocketed hedge fund, hedge fund as a partner. And um, I went back up to Albany. Uh, I met with the governor, and to his credit, he said if I could convince budget lottery and and pat foy that he would lower the tax rate and and again i i said it will generate more money for education and i was right it did so i became an expert in this business and um what i've learned very simply is that the moral issue is is over with because the people that those people who are concerned about poor people gambling they play slot machines they don't play table games. Uh, if you go into any casino, you will not see any poor people uh, sitting at a craps table or a blackjack table or playing poker for that matter. Um, at Tioga, you won't really see any poor people. You'll see mainly older, retired people. Uh, if you do go to Yonkers, you probably will see poor people. Um, but that argument was lost when we got, got this whole thing started back after 9-11. So the moral argument to me is makes no sense because 
all we're talking about here is allowing, either allowing three of us, uh, there are three upstate racinos that are eligible to convert over, Tioga, Saratoga, and Monticello. And Monticello actually would move to the Neville, to, to the Concord, I'm sorry, uh, and build, actually build a resort destination. Uh, I'm not sure what Saratoga would do, but Saratoga is in the perfect resort location, Saratoga Springs. Tioga, there's not, you know, I'm prepared to spend 70, 80, 90 million dollars in addition to what I've already spent, but there is not a demand for a resort type casino. And I can't, I can't make the numbers work. There are only 600,000 people that live within 50 miles of, 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 of that place. Uh, you know, to give you an idea, I think, you know, there's probably 14 million that live within 50 miles of Aqueduct and Yonkers. So, and even uh, Saratoga, there's I think 1.2 million, plus all the visitors they get. So, um, uh, to me, the moral argument, there is no moral argument. Um, this is really about jobs. <clears throat> and to add insult to injury to the people who are morally opposed to it, if they took the time to read it, they would see that the governor has very cleverly inserted a provision that says that if the referendum fails, that the state would then have the right to add slot machines to all of these districts. So basically, if you're voting, when you go in the voting booth, you have two choices. You can vote to have more gambling with jobs, or you can vote to have more gambling without jobs. But either way, you're voting for more gambling. And the fact is that upstate New York is in terrible shape. Um, I would, uh, it, you know, I spend, I have a house up near Tioga Downs, uh, on the Pennsylvania side of the border, uh, because it's there are certain advent because I have a horse farm in New York, so I have a horse farm in Pennsylvania. There are certain benefits in Pennsylvania that you don't get in New York. Um, they also have fracking in Pennsylvania, so uh, another fiasco because why they don't allow fracking in upstate New York is beyond me. Uh, I have a well right next door. And, and it created thousands of jobs, but that's a different story. So, so these jobs are desperately needed up there. Um, and, uh, you know, one or two things is going to happen. Either I'll convert over to a, cas to a casino, which means that I probably won't add any slot machines. I'll just add table games and poker, or someone else will f get the license and they will add uh, they will have table games and slot machines and poker, and I'll have less customers for my slot machines. So the number of people that are going to gamble up there is not going to change one bit. The people that uh, r right now, the biggest difference uh, is that what I find is the younger affluent people want to play table games. Uh, they don't want to sit in front of a slot machine. So when I do promotions that get younger people in the door, uh, which is uh, another thing that New York doesn't allow, this WWE, what is it, W, you know, that uh, crazy, uh, um, you know, where they fight. Oh, yeah, yeah, mixed martial arts. Mixed mar right. martial arts. Right. So another ingenious thing that they don't allow in New York. Um, so when I, so fortunately, so we televise those, those things, they're on pay-per-view, and people, you know, all young people come to the place, because why pay $50 to watch it at home when you can come to Tioga Downs for free, and there's no minimum even, I mean, if you don't order a few beers, we're really screwed, so we pack them in for that, as soon as it fights end, they all leave, nobody stays. Before the fights, they don't go in the casino. So the only benefit I get out of it is, is selling some uh, food and beverage, beer and stuff. Um, so th these customers, the people who have the money, right now are going to either Mohegan Sun in Pennsylvania, where they have a beautiful facility in Wilkes-Barre, okay. okay. right. or they're going to Turning Stone uh, near near uh, near Vernon Downs, which is another big mistake. Don't open a racino five miles from a casino, <laughs> especially if the casino pays no taxes. So uh, I learned that the hard way. Um, so I don't, you know, to me, 
the, the argument, the negative argument, there is no negative argument. It's going to create jobs. I guarantee that. Uh, we estimate just for our, our little place, we'll create about 300 jobs for construction workers and another 200 permanent jobs. Uh, the Times editorial brilliantly said, well, construction jobs are temporary. Well, I can tell you that when I was, I did a press conference two weeks ago, and I was approached by the business agent for the uh, steel workers and the and the sheet metal workers, and they said to me, Jeff, whatever we can do to help, our guys are sitting home without a job. So it's fine for someone from the Times who has a job to say to the guy who has two kids to feed and doesn't have a job that it's only temporary, so why do it? I mean, that's kind of ridiculous. We're, we've got all our approvals. We're ready to go. Matter of fact, if it passes, I'm going to start construction of uh, the indoor parking garage the next day. Uh, then I would wait to see if I get a license uh, before going ahead with the, with the hotel. So I don't, I don't really, I'm very interested to see what my friend here from the Daily News has to say, because frankly, I don't get it. And, and the reality is you can vote f for more gambling with jobs or you can vote for more gambling without. Most people would think it's at least better to have jobs. But uh, we'll hear what he has to say. Yeah, Harry. Well, I think to the extent we're talking about Tioga Downs, this makes perfect sense. Um, as uh, the governor is well, He agrees of saying, with the Times. <laughs> not exactly, but uh, when the Times and the Post end up on the same page on an issue where they're not taking marching orders, like, say, a Bloomberg endorsement, there there's tend to be serious issues or concerns. So whether or not in places upstate that could use construction jobs, temporary or not, and casino jobs, however they pay, and obviously that's been a fight here as well, and they're not always the best paying jobs, and they're not always as many as promised, but however that goes, the, the concern is, as, as you know from Racino's on, all of this gets done in slightly cockamamie ways, which is why we're still talking about carving out different exemptions to a constitution that nominally still opposes gambling. And so here we've got in fact, a, um, an, a constitutional amendment that is uh, put on with sort of funny rig language that has the first position on the ballot, all of these sensible things that the governor has done to make sure that this passes, since most people are pretty passive and unaware of the issue. And then that only talks about seven, up to seven, full casinos and facilities. The four upstate, I don't think, and particularly because these would be largely where existing facilities are, and presumably with casino owners who have signed on, and there's been incredible alignment of everyone with skin in the game, um, one way or another, including construction workers, uh, casino owners, either really backing this up or being very quiet about the issue. And people have been critical in the past, uh, the Catholic Church, Donald Trump, for instance, being quieter this time around. So it's those three remaining casinos, which there's a vague promise, as Abe said, that, that this would be seven years or something. But that's not in the amendment, uh, leaving the, the funny language there aside. And it's very reasonable to assume. And you get all sorts of surprises. The casinos, for instance, were supposed to be, I mean, the nominal political argument at the time was this would be the money injection after 9-11. And there was a, a crisis, and let's get this done. And it was a bit more expansive than people expected. And then there were lawsuits, there was a ridiculously high tax rate to start with, and they took much longer to get online and for that money to start flowing than anyone expected. So, so really, my concern, and I'm speaking for myself, not for the, uh, the, the news editorial board, um, is that it seems very likely we would end up with, with two things that would worry me. And these aren't exactly moral concerns. One would be a, uh, or aren't immediately moral concerns, I think that moral elements, that, that we would end up with real gambling in Manhattan. I think uh, having Aqueduct there, uh, the incredible take it's had, seeing how what Yonkers is continuing to do and how high the per, per machine take continues to be with a, uh, with a uh, casino in Queens. Uh, because the casino racino thing is eh. And they functionally have VLTs that are table games and are not actually paramutual and may or may not be constitutional, but the state constitution is not a document anyone respects or takes very seriously, nor should it be. It's not. Uh, it has the word constitution there, so it, it tends to confuse people. It seems very unlikely to me that you would have this giant, dense, uh, downstate audience where there's clearly a market for gambling uh, without building that market out. So New Yorkers 
more of Cuomo's brilliance is sort of winding and aligning this right are who's going to decide on Long Islanders. Uh, we've, got the, uh, we've got the larger elections this year. We're going to be a large percent of the state's total turnout. And what we're being told is, don't worry, this has nothing to do with you, and these guys need jobs. And, and you're absolutely right, we don't have fracking. And this other extractive industry that has, I think is much more economic promise. So, so this is what we're left with, and like, why not? It's got a prominent position on the ballot, which matters. The print on the ballot is six point, almost unreadable. It's large and complicated. And then you turn it around, and there's this thing, hey, do you want to pay for jobs, schools, and lower property taxes? You know, sure. Uh, in New York, we don't think as much about the property taxes, but that's very important in Long Island. So, so that's a, uh, a real concern. And the argument with each of these steps is, hey, we already have it. The camel's nose is here. Why not have more? And having a full-service casino in Manhattan, any casino in Manhattan, would, would be a, uh, a really dramatic change in the, uh, the life and the feel of the city, and one that we haven't considered. It would clearly get money from tourists. Uh, there would clearly be a market for it. But it, it seems like uh, yet another of these steps that, that, that potentially we reach, the, the, we have a shortfall in a few years. Uh, we have a, a law, but Albany changes these laws very easily. And uh, suddenly, here's another free billion dollars. And these numbers really do get thrown out. The, the billion that this is supposed to generate now, as E.J. McMahon just wrote at the Post and at a bit more length at the Empire Center, not exactly. Most of that money is already there. The projected money includes the 2,000 new uh, uh, VLTs that are going up regardless. You've got these strange sort of interesting SOPs with the way the poison pills have been set up, where, where, where basically the patronage operations in Long Island and their OTBs, which still exist, are going to end up with some of that money. So, so this gets complicated. And obviously, the way this has been put together is rigged. It's not the worst or most surprising thing. It's how business gets done. But there's something undemocratic and troubling about it. You see it in the, uh, in the various polls showing most New Yorkers are, are, are evenly split or slight majority are against until you end up with this language and then they're for. You see it in the way the, the, the money's aligned, and uh, the governor has had to sort of choose between, you know, hey, I don't want to talk about this, but I'm for it, and then, then putting real muscle behind it to make sure that this goes through. And once it is, nobody thinks about it again. So I would announce that that's, that's fine. Um, there's not much of a difference at the table games. I'm skeptical about that. I know in Atlantic City, in Vegas, I, I mean, everywhere, because we have hundreds of thousands more slot machines than we did quite recently. Those continue to be the, the money drivers, and the table games are to some extent cosmetic and to try to get younger people in through the doors. They also, they just don't take up that much space. And so per square foot, when you're thinking about that, they, they have a ton of value. But pretty much every opinion writer, columnist, editorial writer, person who thinks about this seriously is very reluctant to sign on, except people with, with skin in the game or direct interests and seeing this expansion, which is, again, not the, 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 the shift from the, the racinos to casinos is, uh, is silly. The, the, the state right now has a really weird system. Everyone has a, basically a different tax cut that they're putting in. Uh, places have to close at night for reasons that don't quite make sense. It's strange. It's uh, artificial. Leaving all the moral issues aside, any questions about those, uh, it, would it be any more or less regressive? We're just going to have the state that much more invested in generating this revenue and over-promising on it. Um, and the expectation is this would come to New York, and we would have a gigantic new source of money for Albany that people would have reason to, to uh, legislators to have renewed as often as possible, to create a process in which people have to continually lobby, uh, are offering them more money. We're going to have a uh, rate of collection that we're going to claim the whole idea is they're going to the neighboring states. Everyone who gambles already is gambling. I'm skeptical of that. But if that's so, eventually our cut has to keep coming down and coming down, or it does in other states. The collection goes down. Um, there's no example of the massive educational benefits, the lotteries or casinos. P people point to numbers. But there's not a state where this happened and suddenly educational results dramatically improved. So you get outside of the, the organized interest sets, maybe teachers unions, for instance, in this case. It's just hard to see how this is actually a boon. You're looking at uh, a, a effectively service jobs, some really valuable construction jobs that I, I wouldn't make light of, but eventually go away, and a tremendous amount of hype for something that seems to be buying this governor time and space to operate without having to deal with fracking while he figures out other ambitions. 
in ways that are very likely to have selfish, greedy people, including potentially the next governor, as we saw with the last governor, do really bad, ugly, extractive things to New York that don't necessarily end well. Finally, the idea that we're going to have a world-class process this time for selecting who receives these licenses seems uh, very unlikely to me, uh, despite fairly airy promises that have been made. I assume that uh, the Racino owners who have signed on have uh, some incentive to do so and some expectation to think that, that they're likely to end up uh, with, these, uh, with these licenses as a sensible political matter. I'm sure they have some concerns about that and how these things play, but uh, once you start looking at New York and you start opening up the big money, and it helps that Genting has done a good and like sort of hands-off professional job after what had been a disastrous, disastrous process, but we have this morally commission looking at what Albany is doing, that the Cuomo set up to, to go at the legislator. We have questions about Cuomo, the idea that this is all going to be handled professionally, hands-off, in a way where we have a steady predictable revenue stream that is doing magical good for all of us, whether or not it's an extractive tax on the, the poor, the superstitious, the enumerate, is very, very unlikely. So I just see um, a complicated two-phase thing in which something that might be perfectly sensible for, for, for upstate and for where we already are with gambling is actually a proposal about what may happen in the most affluent, uncracked, or, or now slightly cracked, but still almost virgin gambling market in the world, and that tremendously concerns me. Um, I guess I'll ask a question of Jeff, I think, and then ask a question Harry, but Jeff, really, in, in many ways you feel the moral issue, the horse has left the barn, so to speak, and the moral issue, um, you know, is a philosophical issue that we can talk about philosophically, but gambling is here, and let's not fool ourselves. I think Harry's point is that's probably true for maybe 60 percent of the state but the great fear is those three players to be named later and that those three casinos to be named later maybe sooner rather than later will happen in New York City um, where you have an extraordinary amount of both wealth and poverty and that particularly depending on how those casinos get set up they will draw in a whole new class of poor people into gaming. Do you think his fear is justified? Any comments on your part? I think his fear is theoretically justified, but practically unjustified for one reason. <clears throat> we all live in a city, New York, where if you want to put a casino in someone's neighborhood, you won't live long enough to see that approved. We saw what happened when they wanted to put a football stadium on the west side where they were going to play 10 football games a year. At the end of the day, recognizing all of the moral issues around casino gambling, what's wrong with people having the choice to actually, even if it hurts them, to do it? When you have casinos, a lot more people gamble. That's part of the model they're built around, and they're people within 50 miles in a dense urban environment west. That's the, the, the real difference. When you look at states where, where they're taxing and getting revenue from marijuana, for instance, uh, you don't actually see much of an increase in who's using marijuana or medical problems associated with it or anything else. Um, the casinos, there, there are questions, obviously, people in this room have raised about, about having the state involved in, in an extractive and what can be a really sort of ugly extractive industry and getting a cut of that. We, leaving even that aside, what, what distinguishes them for me and what makes me worry about them here as opposed to other syntaxes right. or, or, or things you can go at is you are actually creating new, uh, new users. And I don't know how many people in this room who, who feel morally one way or the other about casinos have spent time with, uh, with slot machines or, or VLTs recently, but they're, they're really, impressive and weird and hypnotic and I think a lot of the people weighing in on this stuff um, just haven't sat down with one of them for three hours starting off with a couple hundred bucks and like getting these noises and lights of reward while actually your money's going slightly down like they are beautifully set up to, to, to get you going and I, I've put some money into them and not like in an experiment I'll record what's going on in my brain way but because I was in a casino and, and like you know what the hell I'll sit down here and, and they really wrap you in. Um, so it just strikes me that people who would not otherwise be gambling that money or putting all of it into the lotto 
uh, even even the advanced lotto games that they have in the bodegas now, where where, where the numbers are flipping on, are getting turned on by this, and it, it it's it's doing things that are really hurtful for them and a sort of dysfunction that again in a dense urban environment has severe social costs for other people who are around them, and. and some people are going to gamble, and that's that. But uh, I think it plays out differently, and you, you feel it with like the guys who are hanging around and how they act, and how they act when, when they literally, you know, it's, it's like the first or the sixteenth, and they're without money uh, because they've been going through this. And I think adding significantly to that number would be a, a, a very difficult and distressing thing in a way that the, these other things. Uh, John Liu proposed legalizing marijuana here, functionally, for, for reasons partly involving political pressure, but partly just involving practicality, Kelly moved away from, from caring about it. It's been, the, the, the state decriminalized possession in 77. Kelly stopped enforcing anything that wasn't street level transactions very early on. He said, it's just a waste of time. Like if guys aren't involved in other crime and they're delivering stuff to you, that's fine. Um, I think we moved a fair amount in that direction and talking about taxing would, would be reasonable. But again, when you go to the places that have tax, it does not create new users. Casinos, people who that is their core business and that's what they're banking on, and in these areas are banking on new users and new new ones who are close by and will return. Well, I looked into it because um, I, I was curious myself because I'm not interested in taking, you know, taking somebody's you know money for groceries, obviously. And if you look at our players club members, which are basically our best customers, these are the people who have signed up. And, and, and what we call rated players. So uh, our rated players come an average of 2.4 times a month and lose $60 per visit. Um, but in, but in, in, they're also getting a free, you know, free, a free meal, a free concert, a free this, a free that. Um, why shouldn't a lady in Binghamton who wants to, who's retired, if she wants to go to and lose $50 sitting at a slot machine, and I want to go to a jet game with my grandson and spend $450 for a ticket and $100, you know, $50 for parking and another $100 for lunch, or if I want to take my wife to the theater and spend $150, $300 for two tickets and another $100 for dinner, and if I buy a bottle, you know, it's it's freedom, and it's no different than than you or I. You know, we 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 like to drink. Uh, I like to have wine. I like to have a beer, but there are people who are alcoholics. So should I be prohibited, like we had in prohibition, from from drinking, because there's some people who can't control drinking? And what you're saying is. Um, you know, it's, it's freedom, and people don't want the government telling them what to do with their money. And I, I just think it's, 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 it's elitist. You know, the, the Times, you know, doesn't think it's a bad thing. I, you know, I, I hate to tell you what my Nick tickets cost now. I mean, it's the, the, the little old lady in Binghamton, if I told her what I paid for a Nick ticket, she says, you're an idiot. <laughs> I'd much rather go sit in front of a slot machine 30 times uh, you know, for what you're paying for a ticket to watch the Knicks play for two hours. And truthfully, it's only the last few minutes you have to even watch. So, <laughs> but it's, fr it's freedom and, 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 you know, that's what it is. I, 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 wish, I wish there were no problem gamblers and I wish there were no people who smoke cigarettes. But if you don't ban cigarettes, which we know kills you, we know that. Why on earth would you ban gambling, which is not going to kill you? And I'll say another thing. I guarantee you that this referendum will, in Tioga County will pass by 20 points. And I guarantee you that I'm probably the most liked person in the whole county. And, and yet these people are losing, you know, they go there and, and they come up to me all the time. Mr. Goral, thank you so much. It's the only new building that's been built in Tioga County in 40 years, and it's nice. I didn't build a junky place, and, and, and I'll tell you another thing that's fascinating. 65% of the people that live within 50 miles of Tioga Downs have never set foot in Tioga Downs, and it's right off the highway, and I've been open for seven years. You'd think they'd be curious, or they would come for a concert, or they would come for a, we have a sports bar. So, you know, people who, there are people who like to 
gamble, and they come. And there are people who like table games, and they, all I'm doing is taking them away from Mohegan Sun and Turning Stone and bringing them to me if I'm lucky enough to get, <laughs> have no competition for the license. I, you know, I see your point, and, and, and I thought long and hard about going into this business. But honestly, you know, I, I can't say that I, I, I have one bit of regret when I walk around there, and I walk around there all the time. Everyone knows me. Everyone knows me personally. Uh, and, you know, uh, life's not perfect, you know what I mean? It's, it's still a, it's a freedom issue, I think. Well, it's changed because once the court ruled that a VLT is legal, it can go anywhere. Now, we've been successful up to now in, in making the argument that they should only be at racetracks. Uh, because the, the one thing that we fear, frankly, is that they'll start popping up in bars and restaurants, and then they're just, well, you know, they're just taking my customers. Um, the, the, the law that, that, not the constitutional amendment, the constitutional amendment is one sentence, the Lao Seven Casinos, but the law that was passed with it basically provides, number one, that no matter that it, that, Nassau and Suffolk each get a thousand VLTs, irregardless of anything else. And then, they, t if that wasn't bad enough, it says that if the law, if there's a no vote, then they get even more. Then, for me, per for me up in Tioga, I think they can add either 500 or a thousand VLTs in my region. So, they did change it. Yeah. yeah. I also. There's a lot of speculation. I don't want to say it's definitive, but there was a lot of speculation that this expansion in the law to Nassau and Suffolk was to neutralize Genting so they would not oppose the amendment. This way. It was. <laughs> it was. We, there's no question about it. The, no, the, 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 there's, that's exactly why it was done. Because I, you know, when I spoke to the, to the governor's people and I, I said to them, well, how do you know we're not going to oppose it? Now, I was always planning to not oppose it. I was taking a shot. You know, I, got no, I, I don't make any money anyway, and it was, it's like a hobby. I mean, I, 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 it's not my main. But uh, so they said, well, we have a plan for that. <laughs> and when the bill came out, sure enough, they had a plan. And in the plan, there's basically a provision that says that if, if it fails, that they can add 500 or 1,000 slot machines in, in my region, which would be devastating for me, absolutely devastating, and create no jobs. So obviously, uh, your, your question, yeah, they've changed the rules, but, but and they're gonna be a thousand, irregardless, they're gonna put VLTs in Nassau and Suffolk, uh, mainly to prop up the OTBs out there. And you know. to stop Genting. To and to stop Genting. I think there was a dual. There were dual. Two, there were dual reasons. Yeah. But the governor, to his credit, has just come out with, I forget what they call it. Startup. Startup New York, where if you do something in these areas around the university, certain colleges, you pay no taxes for 10 years. So you would think that would be appealing. Believe me, if I could have a magic wand, I would love to see, you know, these people, uh, you know, get, get jobs. It's, it's sad. I mean, it's, it's heartbreaking. Uh, to see how depressed it is up there, and these, you know, these these are all places where there was manufacturing, near the Erie Canal or or, or uh, near the railroad, and those jobs are not coming back. They're never coming back. I mean, companies that you'd be shocked, like uh, um, I remember my wife going to uh, Oneida Silverware. They're out of business. I mean, my wife went there. She was buying stuff for ten cents a knife. You know, because and it was heartbreaking. Here's here's all those jobs lost, and a, a company that's been in business probably for a hundred years. Um, it's just it's just okay. It's, it's a nightmare. And but I think the governor gets it now. Getting someone to move their business to New York for all these incentives is not so easy because there are other states that are also offering super duper deals. And and I think. New York, like up there, have a great workforce. These are the hardest working people I've ever yeah. met. And they work, you know, for $10 an hour plus benefits. And they love me. Now I'm saying to myself, 
you know, $10 an hour. How does anyone live on $10 an hour with benefits? But that's a dollar and a half more than Walmart pays, and Walmart's the biggest employer in America, and they don't give people benefits. So I can tell you that, you know, it's a little it's cheaper to live up there. A lot of these people, it's a second job. Um, they get tips, so, you know, that helps as well. But I guarantee you, if you went into that casino and asked the customers, um, I'm interested, the Times is doing a story on Tioga Downs, which is going to come out tomorrow, and I have no idea what this guy's going to say. I've given him every bit of information. He sent me 30 emails. I've answered every question. I told him I gave $375,000 to jobs for New York or whatever it is. I got nothing to hide. Um, and he, unannounced, went up to Tioga Downs, and I have no idea what he found. He, he, he did not say he was coming. so. We didn't know he was there, um, and I'd be interested to see what his what he thinks. Uh, what he thinks. Um, I, I would also make the observation. I'll, I'll preface it by saying I don't always agree with everything the governor does, but I will tell you, this governor has been very focused on on the economic development front. That his biggest challenge is what I call upstate New York now. Even if you're very focused, there are, you know, I think as Jeff says, there are enormous international trends that is just taking manufacturing out of upstate. And nobody has come up yet with the right set of incentives to turn that around. And, and I'm not saying casino gambling is going to do that either. But kids, once they graduate college, don't want to stay in upstate New York. I'll tell you that right now. I mean, my, my, my assistant. He was working at Tioga Downs, and uh, she, asked, she, she asked me to try to find her a job in New York City. So I, I said, well, I could talk to the people at Yonkers, I could talk to the people at Aqueduct, and, and then my, uh, my assistant quit unexpectedly. So I said, well, if you want, apply for the job, you know, because I, I left it up to HR. Um, and she, she got the job. She's terrific, you know, but, you know, she just wanted to get out of there. Um, it's, it's, heart, it's heartbreaking, and, and the governor's on the right track. One of the reasons that people don't go there upstate, the taxes are very high, because the tax base has disappeared. You know, the, the, they still have the cost of running the government. You know, I used to stay, before I built a house up there, I used to stay in bed and breakfast in, in Owego and other, and I, these beautiful old houses, and I'd ask them what their taxes are, $20,000. You know, you know, I mean, it's like a house, uh, you know, a house in Westchester. They complain about paying $20,000 for a house that's worth $2 million. Yeah. Here's a house that's worth $150,000, and the taxes are $20,000. Well, in upstate New York, the real dilemma is that whether it's the city of Albany, the city of Syracuse, over 60% of the tax base is not on the tax roll. It's all tax-exempt property. So you're continuing to see the shrinkage of the tax base, which is, it's, it's been a very vicious cycle in their whole host. I think the, the money that people are spending there, like if you're 80 years old and you have arthritic knees and what options, and you want to have fun. Well, you may think it's fun to go to the movies and pay $13 for a movie. That person may think it's fun to sit in front of a slot machine. Well, you know, the, 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 the Truth of it is, in my, you know whose money is being lost up there? Their children. Because all that's all it's happening is these older people are going to have less money to leave to their children, because that's whose money they're spending. And so what? What's the, what's the problem? And these are people, by the way, who, who probably used to take a bus to Atlantic City and gamble anyway. So, well, I mean, I can answer. We, we had to get CEQA approval. It's never been a big problem. Um, just something that we had to do. Uh, yeah. No, it wasn't overly expensive. I mean, it created jobs for people who yeah. do who do yeah. do that work. You know, I mean, look, I'm not. I got. I invested a hundred million dollars in two cities that are totally depressed. I have 600 people work for me, and I give $40 million to the state for education. I got no problem, I think, and I got all these horsemen up there, you know, with all the jobs they've created. 
go down the go the, think about all the people like go to the gas station that's outside of Tioga Downs and see what how business is over there and the sales tax that's generated I'm I'm oh. you know you're you're, you're I, could, I can't answer well I can well I'm here to say is that the horse is out of the barn and what we're dealing with is do you want gambling with jobs or do you want gambling without jobs because the governor is very cleverly that's the choice that's on the table and most people probably don't even realize that's the choice I also want to just follow up on your first observation of whether it's economic development and try to at least give a narrative of why someone might argue it is I think part of and and I'm curious to hear Harry's thoughts on it you can make the argument that one of the problems in upstate New York is there are no destinations anymore you know there's been a whole deterioration in communities and particularly young bright people don't want to stay there because they don't feel there's a destination one of the few success stories in upstate New York and, and people forget 30 years ago it was almost as depressed as Schenectady was the city of Saratoga and through some really good planning, the city of Saratoga became a destination. You know, you, the revitalization of the track, the revitalization of SPAC, the Saratoga Performing Arts Center, a lot of hot restaurants and bars coming in. I think the governor's vision, and I don't know if it's going to pan out, that's why, is he's, and which is, I, my sense is Jeff's not quite in the same place, he wants to use these casinos to try to become like destinations. Major, massive investments, both in terms of restaurants and glitzy shows, et yeah. cetera, to try to attract it. I mean, I mean, Turning Stone is that. Turning Stone is, is, Turning Dave's, Stone is Dave's, becoming a destination. Is it absolutely a destination, yeah. but they pay no taxes. Yeah. So if they had to pay ta now the governor, to his credit, it's done an amazing job. He's gotten these, all these Indian tribes to pay taxes that's a lot of money. I mean, the Oneidas haven't paid a penny of taxes to anybody, including real estate, sales tax. You that, name that was his father. That was his father. <laughs> You're exactly right. His father made this idiotic deal, and and the state taxpayers have suffered with it. And somehow they talked to the Oneidas. They frightened them into into agreeing to this. And the Seneca is also who would stop paying. So. The guy's got to get credit for I, that. I want to turn it. The to, governor to keeps uh, keeps keeps talking about destination resorts. Yes, and, and there is this question of uh, of making places in upstate destinations again. But I mean, there's a couple things. Um, uh, southern tier and large swaths of the state. M these are not in any way. There's not the population density. There's not anything else around that anybody thinks that that's fully credible. One. Two, if you do manage to build destination resorts in, in, in less populated, farther off parts of, of New York State somehow, um, they don't necessarily make the area destinations. I, I mean, look at Atlantic City's actually pretty brief, fairly disastrous history with, with, with gambling. And you know, you walk two blocks off the boardwalk and you're on Atlantic Avenue going north. You walk another block north, another block north, you, you are in a... And I'm not being a moralist about this. It, and it was but, different. It had all the gambling. Can in the I just say region. something? Wait, 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 yeah. Give me just one sec. So, but this was an attempt to say we're going to have these casinos and there's going to be a, a world and a thing around it. And this is an exaggerated form. And it was all the gambling in the Northeast at the time. And there's not a supermarket there. There's not a movie theater outside of the casinos. And inside, even now, and, and you know, some of them are having their financial troubles, they're really nice places. They're, they're, they're comfortable. There's nice amenities. But you do not leave that. Maybe you go to the boardwalk, but you do not go in at all. Uh, you don't, people are there don't go anywhere else in South Jersey. It, it, it's its own very distinct thing. And uh, that is, I think, the best you can hope for from having, uh, from having you know, areas that, that are built around destination resorts that are casinos. And, and obviously, if anyone just wanted to have a destination resort that wasn't inside in the way casinos do, where, where you're not quite in the normal space-time cont continuum, and it was like four separate buildings, and you'd walk around and see a lot of the natural environment and be exposed to the area, maybe that would be something else. But no one is talking about destination resorts separate from casinos. So, so, so the attempt to sort of slip that like it's on the side, just I have a really hard time buying that. I, I think he but went, I, but I'm going to allow. I, I think you'll see destination resorts in the Catskills. I think. I, I, I think. I, I wish I could build a destination resort. I wish there were a million 
and a half people instead of 600,000, but, but there aren't. But in answer to your Atlantic City, Atlantic City, the reason that Atlantic City failed was the tax rate was 8%. Getting a casino license in Atlantic City was a license to print money. Mm -hmm. that was, that's what it was. Yeah. And these greedy guys didn't invest any of that money any place but into their pockets. And now they're screwed because they have uh, uh, just what you said, a place that no one wants to go to, whereas in Las Vegas, people go to Las Vegas because seven out of eight people who go to Las Vegas don't even gamble. They go for all the other things. Atlantic City tried to do that with Revel, which went bankrupt yeah, in a hurry. Revel, Borgana, I, I mean, like they, they made a few attempts. And now, they, they keep in worked. mind that, that now government, and I helped write the laws, the tax rate is 50 percent. So the reason that I'm paying $40 million, little rinky-dink Tioga, is, is, is because the tax rate's high. So it's doing something good for, for, the, for the citizens of the state. Whereas a casino license in New Jersey, now, if you want to write something that's a joke, do you know that, that they passed the law, that Christie signed the law that makes it legal for you to play slot machines from your bedroom on mm -hmm. a credit card? Yep. Now, he vetoed that exact same law last year mm -hmm. and said it was unconstitutional. But when Atlantic City started going down the tubes and he saw, what am I going to do because he sees big bucks there from these guys when he runs for president, all of a sudden what was unconstitutional in 2012 be became constitutional. What could be worse? What politician could legitimately justify saying, I think it's okay for people living in my state to play slot machines with a credit card from their bedroom? I can't think of a worse piece of garbage bill, and nobody ever criticizes the guy. No, well, they got no, got no publicity. Why, why is it so much worse if it's in the bedroom? It's like if you have this with set a credit aside card? It, you don't think that's worse? I, I, I do think it's worse, but I... I, I mean, I, you got to drive to Tioga well, down. I, I, but, I, but, by a question of degree. The size of flip here. <laughs> you He's anti. <laughs> you got to drive to there. You know why people, you know why people don't want them in urban areas? <laughs> they like the idea of driving to, to Tioga Downs. I was talking to, to Libis yesterday, who's the senator, senator from, from up from there. Binghamton. And he said to me, he said, Jeff, they don't want a casino. I've talked to my constituents. They like the idea that they have to schlep 30 miles in order to, so they don't want to be able to walk into a casino or drive three minutes to a casino. So, so he, was say, he was trying to make me feel better. He said, I don't think there'll be one in Binghamton because I don't think the people want it. But, but at least, you know, I'm employing people. Who's being employed when you're betting, playing slot machines with a credit card? You're employing no one. And by the way, they're taxing that at 15%. Think about it. I mean, it's, it's a... BLTs, it's not, it's not so much employment. I, I want to save Harry for last. No, I, I want to save Fred for last, and there are some questions. Well, it's my idea of a destination resort. They've got golf. They've got nightclubs. They've got restaurants. They've got a spa. I mean, they've got four golf courses. They probably spend $500 million and they employ 7,000 people. My only objection is they pay no taxes. But I, I don't see how you can say Turning Stone is a dump. F I hope you didn't go to Vernon Downs. I'm not t saying it's a panacea, and it certainly has social problems, without a question. My argument is that we've already created those social problems already because we have slot machines. So if you, if you believe what you believe, and I understand where you're coming from, that's not what we're here to, to discuss because there's 29,000 slot machines in New York State. The real issue is the people who play the table games are younger, affluent people. That's who likes to play the table games. So why is it good public policy to let them go to Mohegan Sun or let them go to Atlantic City or let them fly to Las Vegas when you could do it right here? As for, you know, if, if that's, the, that's, that's my argument. I mean, the, the fact is you're right. The, the, the part that's, that's addictive and the part that's, you know, you can make an argument that poor people are, are, are being exploited is, is slot machines not table games. Go look at a casino and you will not see poor people rolling the dice. Um, I don't even know how to play dice. My son does, but I don't. But, and, and, and 
some of these other things. You know, game is game is a skill. Whereas obviously, slot machines is not a game of skill. It's a, just a mindless. But but having said that, you you can drink, and there are people who are alcoholics. So why shouldn't someone who wants to lose thirty dollars from Binghamton, who's seventy five years old and led a good life? Why shouldn't she be able to do it? It's not a perfect world. In a perfect world, we'd only let the people in the building who could produce a bank statement that showed that they could afford to be there. But that's not the way it works. Gentleman in the back, and then this gentleman here, and the gentleman there, and then we're going to end with Harry. I would hope I could stay in business. I think what, what my tax rate would get lowered um, because uh, the way it is now, a new casino pays lower tax than, than I do. But they've protected the horse industry. They've thought of everything. So, so what they did was they put a provision in the law. So let's, for argument's sake, say right now I do about $60 million a year, and I give 10% uh, of that to the horsemen. So that's $6 million. So if a new casino opened in Binghamton and I went down to $30 million, so now I would be giving $3 million to the horsemen, the new casino has to give the other $3 million to the horsemen. So the horsemen are basically guaranteed the, the, same, the same amount of money that they get now, they're guaranteed that money irregardless. So they've protected the horsemen. Whether or not I could survive with a casino in Binghamton would remain to be seen. My guess is that I would, I would, it would depend, I would go back to the state and say, you gotta lower my tax rate and they would do it. You know, because why would they want me to go out of business? So I, I think that's what would happen. But it remains to be seen. Look, you know, uh, again, uh, I'm very vulnerable. Uh, you know, everybody makes fun, you know, says, well, you know, we spent so much on lobbyists, although I spent nothing. But the reality is the bill that was passed is horrible for our industry, for the Racino guys. We got nothing. Three, four of us are, are outlawed because of the Indian compacts. Two of us can't get a casino license for seven years, and the other three have to worry about competition. So if, if you wanted to write a worse bill, I don't see how you could, but. You and know. I always say welcome to Albany. Thank you. <laughs> I did bring that up. I said uh, nobody ever points to the state where casinos or lotteries or anywhere else have uh, produced educational results. Um, and, and that money always gets uh, siphoned and mingled and all these other things. But to, 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 your, to your other question, look, I could point to uh, Pascal, Dostoevsky, some really interesting, rich traditions of thought that come out of uh, casinos and staring at what may or may not be white walls and trying to generate meaning out of them and a whole bunch of other things. I could say a lot about the, uh, the, the morality or not of, of gambling. I feel like doing that against a uh, serious, intelligent man who's also a casino owner would have been a uh, not productive conversation. Um, and, and you know, at a certain point, there, there, are, there are things that are even bigger than this forum and this room and this, this audience can necessarily hold. And uh, since there's going to be some gambling in New York, uh, and this is, this is, some people are going to gamble. You have questions about what happens when the state gets involved. Um, the Institute's done some really remarkable work on this that you've seen informing a lot of the columnist coverage and, and things that people have written, including myself. And I think it's impressive. And I think there's some really depressing elements to it, but it just, uh, I'm not sure what we'd, we would have accomplished by engaging in that. Perhaps, perhaps you know, you, you well, disagree. Um, I, I would say that when you're talking about why can't we have this freedom, of course, we're not talking about a prohibition. We're talking about expanding what the state is already allowing, uh, we, we, which is a notable distinction. And with, with the alcohol comparison, that, and then I'll be done, uh, with the alcohol comparison, that, that it is to some extent a question of how many people are how badly damaged with everything, with, with, what we, uh, with what we ban, with what had been banned that we allow, how many people are how badly damaged and at how large a cost um, more broadly. Um, and, and so when you're talking about like th th this nice old lady and her 300 bucks a month, and then it's, wait, hey, we're doing 60 million a year, I know that's not all coming from really nice 75-year-old ladies. I also know that generally, casinos are really loath to give up any sort of information about their, uh, <laughs> you know, their best players books, all the people they're tracking. And that when the journal recently managed to get a hold of one of those data sets, that it was compelling in terms of basically every single person involved losing money. 
um, they uh, did not have the sort of frequency charts to go to, to what you were pointing out, but it might really be exceptional up there. I think it really might be different in larger, more spread out areas where even if people don't really want to have, you know, to take a half an hour trip, there's something sort of nice about it if that's the deal. Um, and I'm just very afraid about how this plays in New York, and I think the questions about that are, are which are not finally moral questions, but practical ones. Like gambling's either right or wrong, but I think gambling in New York City would be different and destructive in different ways, and I think this opens that door up. To, to me, that's the, uh, the, the baseline concern. As somebody who's in, in, you know, very invested in this city, I have to assume that there's part of you that shares that, and it's a few jumps ahead, and there are more immediate things to think about, but I, I, I just, uh, I, I keep hearing from, from, from people who are pushing this very casually, it won't happen. But, and we'll talk about it if it does. <coughs> so but let me, it's you know, you, very you, you, you s said it right. You, you don't gamble. You don't enjoy it. You never have. I don't gamble. But I don't own stocks because I think they're crooks. But a lot of people own stocks. That's gambling. I mean, it's pure gambling. Um, there are people who buy stocks and sell them the next day if it goes up 50 cents. <coughs> You can't tell people what to do. There, if if you know, where do you draw the line? Should we tell automobile manufacturers that they should make a car that doesn't go more than seventy miles an hour because it's a lot safer if everybody drove under seventy or under fifty? We certainly should ban cigarettes, but we haven't. It's not a you know. I, I'm with you, and I'm not here to deny that I we think of ways to get people to come. And gamble, we do. That's the business we're in. Having said that, if I knew somebody was gambling too much, I would tell them not to. Uh, and I, I say that every time someone walks up to me and says, Mr. Goral, I really thank you for, for building this place. I love it, I come here all the time. And I said, well, I hope you don't lose more than you can afford to lose. And they always say the same thing. They said, no, I come here with a fixed budget, and if I lose it, I lose it. So I don't, I don't, you know, it's, it's, you're 100% right, you're right. If we drove up to Yonkers Raceway right now, you would see people that you would say should not be in this building gambling. I don't know how to, how to on the other hand, they're, they're, they're 90% <laughs> maybe you'd, you'd say they could afford to it, they enjoy it. Just what I said before, 65% of the people that live within 50 miles have never set foot in Tioga Downs, which is remarkable because when I first went up up there, because I never even knew where Tioga County was, I knew where Binghamton was and that was it. And I stayed at a hotel and I asked the girl behind the desk, I said, gee, I'm thinking of, of buying Tioga Downs and making it into a casino. Do you think it would be successful? And she said, yeah, you'll probably do okay because there's nothing to do up here. And that's, that's the truth, you know? And for those people who like to gamble, you know, but 65% of the people don't, have never been inside. I mean, that's shocking, because he'll tell you, I am right off the highway, a highway that these people drive on constantly. So it's not like you have to get off, you know, and find the place. But you're right, you don't enjoy gambling, I don't enjoy gambling, my son loves to gamble. You know, he goes to Atlantic City, he goes to Vegas, he likes to gamble, you know, I'm not, pr I'm not, you know, I didn't encourage it. I don't know why he likes to gamble, because I never gambled. But that's just the way it is. And I think that the reality is that in the overall scheme of things, it's a yes vote is better than a no vote, because a yes vote at least will create jobs. And a no vote will just create more gambling without jobs. Now, that's, you could argue that the same argument that he had, that the wording of it, I'm not, I didn't make the wording up. I, we didn't even ask them to make that wording up. <laughs> But, you know, that's Albany, right? And I was, frankly, I was surprised the judge didn't throw it out. I was surprised the judge didn't throw it out, but he didn't throw it out. I was scared to death. I said, what are we, I, I called up the governor's people. I said, what are we gonna do? They're gonna throw this out, you know what I mean? Because to me, it seemed logical that it was rigged. not, it was rigged. And, and we know from polling that, that it makes a difference. And I'll tell you another thing. You know how few people even know this is on the ballot? It's shocking. So, you know what I'm saying? People don't even know this is on the ballot, so maybe we'll luck out and they'll turn it over, they'll read, the, they'll read it and they'll vote for it just because it sounds so appealing. 
I, I didn't, I'm not, def you know, I don't know the answer. It's, I don't, I, I get it. But the same people, you probably like to read books. So people, <laughs> you know, these, these women in Binghamton would said, I have no interest in reading the books that he likes to read. I like to sit in front of a slot machine. Leave me alone. You know, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, we're starting to wind down. Much to my surprise, it's been a very lively interaction with the audience, you know. <laughs> Uh, uh, and we're going to allow f Fred, the, sp the last voice, the last Is, is, is Fred your father? Yes, he is. <laughs> Wait a second. I mean, uh, talk about, talk about rig. <laughs> well, the, now, now, <laughs> this, this is, is his department. Yes, this yes. is a perennial debate about whether lottery or casinos substitute for how much the state does in terms of tax dollars that goes into education. Uh, having done education aid for the state for more years than I want to count, I will tell you when you really cut to the end, if, if lottery wasn't there, we would spend less money in education probably. It's not, it's not a one-to-one, -one, but at the end of the day, lottery or casino gaming or some other dedicated stream is very important to education. Well, no, but but the the, uh, the lottery the lottery the lottery funds directly go into the state support for education. So, in other words, um, you look at your base. Okay, uh, New York State spends roughly twenty billion dollars on education. Of that twenty billion dollars. Um, lottery is probably, I haven't looked at it recently, is probably about $3 billion. Um, if you were to take lottery out of that $20 billion, if it didn't exist, I don't believe, given all the other pressures in the state budget, that the state would come up with the missing $3 billion. Another sidebar issue that I think Harry raised, which I was curious, is his sense was one of the reasons de Blasio supports this is he thinks this is going to be used to fund K through 12. I think the real fight will be is the legislature will say, okay, we'll give it to K through 12, but then that's the city share and you're not gonna get any other aid yes. in education. And it's gonna be a fight between the K through 12 lobby mm -hmm. and the pre-K lobby for the city share. With, with the <laughs> CFE people playing yes, a big role. That's a big right. role. So I, I think that's an issue that hasn't even been, been discussed is that at the end of the day, you know, for every, the city's only gonna get a certain number of dollars for education, broadly speaking. Where it goes between pre-K and K through 12 is a different issue. But I believe increased lottery. Isn't it a better argument to have like fighting over the money than not having the money at all? Yeah, I would argue yes, but, but, um, but I, I think, you know, if, we, if all of a sudden lottery and casino gambling was to disappear, school aid would go down. Uh -huh. Whether it's dollar for dollar is a different issue. Uh, maybe they would, maybe they wouldn't. I, I, I you know, uh, I know that um, when Genting was talking about, you know, building a convention center at Aqueduct and stuff, they were dead set against it. I mean, they would probably, they could argue that people, tourists will lose money in the casino and not have money to buy theater tickets. Um, I'll argue on that because I was treasurer of SPAC, which was the premier, and as opposed to initially, most of the theater owners in upstate New York were had serious reservations and were going to oppose the casino gambling. And I think last week or two weeks ago, an agreement was reached with them that they have veto power over on these new casinos. A, ter a terrible idea, by the way. <laughs> I've been doing, and I sent. I've been doing. I've been doing concerts at Tioga Downs for seven years. Right. Nobody has ever, ever said one word to me. Uh, from all the competitors that, are, that do concerts, no one has ever said anything to me whatsoever. There's plenty of musical acts to go around. SPAC, I've been to SPAC 20 times, it's gorgeous. Nobody's competing with SPAC, they get major acts. We, you know, we'll never get major acts. I got Bruce Springsteen actually at, at Vernon Downs and we lost money doing it. <laughs> but I had a great time, he sang for three and a half hours. But, you know, it's, anyway. Uh, much to my surprise, we're already past 9 o'clock, 
and I, I don't want to get us into a position of having to pay anybody overtime. So um, I, one of the themes is that many things are rigged in this whole process, and I will say um, I'm delighted that Fred put together this panel. <laughs> And that's boosted the casino take there as well, that, that uh, that's brought new money in for their casinos, incidentally. So, so you could argue this is a very virtuous or unvirtuous circle. No, I think it's very much on topic because it ties into the question he asked that in many ways the job impact and the economic impact of this is relative, from his perspective, is relatively small. But the political impact is enormous because it allows the governor change the debate away from fracking. And, but and you know what I find the most interesting? Yeah. Is comparing him to Christie. Christie could care less what anyone would think about fracking. If he thought it was a good idea, they'd be fracking. He, you could criticize him, you know, and Andrew's exactly the opposite. He does not want to do anything that he thinks he can be criticized for, including giving Jeff Gorell a casino license. I mean, in all honesty. You know, so no question about it. But it's just in, I'm just making an observation because they both are going to want to be president. You have two. You know, here's a guy who came up with a screwball idea to let people gamble from their bedroom on a credit card, and he didn't care what you could call. You could say anything you want to Christie about that stupid. I, I mean, here's a guy who signed a bill that he vetoed a year before on the grounds it was unconstitutional. You would think somebody might say. How did this become constitutional? Like, you know, he don't care. Uh, on that note, I, I, I want to thank the very spirited debate and insights by both Jeff and Harry. And I want to um, want to say we all them around the floor. Thanks, guys. Vote yes on Proposition <laughs> One, or at least read it before you decide. <laughs>